Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes and have here Dr. Debbie Silver. And from what I read, um, we're going to talk about post-betrayal transformation. So uh, I'm interested to get into this topic. But before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Hi. Well, I'm Dr. Debbie Silver, founder of the PBT Post Betrayal Transformation Institute. And, you know, no one really studies betrayal because you have to. <laughs> I mean, because you want to, you study because you have to. It's my 30th year in business. And as life wow. would morph and change, you know, so would business. So I started um, in health and then mindset and then personal development. And then I had a really painful betrayal from my family, mm. thought I did everything I needed to do to heal. And then it happened again a few years later. This time it was my husband. Anybody who's been through it, you know, you're shocked, you're blindsided, you're devastated. And uh, so I got him out of the house, looked at the two experiences and thought, okay, well, what's similar to these two? Of course, me, but what else? And I realized, you know, boundaries were always getting crossed. I never took my own needs seriously. And I know, you know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So here I was, four kids, six dogs, a thriving business. And I, I just made this decision, I'm going back for a PhD. And it was in transpersonal psychology, the psychology of transformation mm -hmm. and human potential, because I was changing so much, I didn't quite understand what was happening. He was too, on his own, wasn't ready to look at that. And then it was time to do a study. So I studied betrayal, what holds us back, what helps us heal, and what happens to us physically, mentally, and emotionally when the people closest to us lie, cheat, and deceive. I had no idea, but that study led to three groundbreaking discoveries, which changed my health, my family, my work, my life. So when it comes to betrayal, um, mm -hmm. and we'll use the example of, say you have uh, someone you're in a relationship with, they cheat on you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sure there's more to that we can talk about later, but mm -hmm. when someone does something like that to you, Mm -hmm. Why does a person go back to that situation? Yeah, well, here's the thing. Betrayal will show you who someone truly is, or it also has the potential to wake them up to who they temporarily became. Mm -hmm. It could be the biggest catalyst to, for transformation on both sides. Mm -hmm. Now, if the person who uh, has been betrayed goes back to the, you know, the person who betrayed them and that, that betrayer isn't doing everything it takes to right the wrong if that wasn't the biggest wake-up call of their life if that wasn't the the most earth-shattering experience for them having them realize they just screwed up the best thing that ever happened to them that's a wasted opportunity and then you know and then what's that person doing you know that 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 the person who's been betrayed needs a lot of work to understand what they're getting involved in if that person has no you know hasn't changed it's a very different experience. It can be when it is that big wake up call on both sides. You know, an easy way to explain it is like this. Uh, you know, people ask me all the time, can trust be repaired? I say no. Can it be rebuilt? Yeah, it takes a lot of work though. And the way yeah. I look at it is, let's say uh, there's a brick wall. The only way I know of a brick wall being built is brick by brick by brick, right? Same thing. Every opportunity someone has to show that they're trustworthy, that's one brick in that brick wall. So it takes a long time to build. Mm -hmm. And then in one earth shattering moment, series of moments, the person who built the brick wall can shatter the whole thing. All, all comes tumbling down. Now you can look at the rubble of bricks and say, I don't have the least bit of interest in watching that thing get rebuilt. And you walk away totally fine. However, if you're willing to watch that brick wall be rebuilt. That would be the job of the person who's been betrayed. The other person who shattered it has to be a really good bricklayer. And it goes back up the same way it went up the first time, brick by brick by brick. But here's what I see. The brick wall has been shattered. There's a rubble of bricks. The person who shattered it isn't really all that motivated or interested in building it. And the person who's so brokenhearted and devastated is like, all right, well, don't worry, I'll just build it. No, no, 
You see, it's got to completely be done by the person who shattered it. Now, uh, when I was married the first time, I was really young when I got married. I was 19, so barely out of high school. And, uh, and a few years went by and, and I had to go in to have surgery done while I was in the middle of having surgery. My wife had a bunch of her friends come over and she moved all of her stuff out. I ended up left at the hospital. I had to try to find somebody to come pick me up and uh, spent all the time recovering on my own. And I, I don't know what it was that possessed me, but, uh, later on decided that we would get back together. I think a lot of it had to do with convenience because it was, you know, fiscally convenient for both of us to be together. And I ended up having a heart attack. And mind you, I was only 36 at the time, but I, I came out and decided it was time to make a change. I quit drinking, doing the drugs and all these other things that I had been doing. And, uh, as I was doing that and thought I was supporting my wife, cause she said she was training at work to become a manager and all these things. And I trusted that's what was going on. Uh, found out that she was actually, uh, moving in with uh, a, a younger gentleman. <laughs> and so the second time she left, and I was like, that, that's it for me. You know, the first time, shame on you. The second time, shame on me. It made it a little bit more difficult to trust people after that. But I found I was just getting into whatever relationship that I could. Just, I, I don't know, the loneliness. Um, maybe yeah. I just wasn't confident. Well, and what you what you described is unfortunately so common, and and you know this is what happens. First of all, a heart attack is really common too, uh, with betrayal. Because think about it, this is your heart center. Your heart center is so has taken such a massive hit. It just you know broken heart syndrome is real. It's a real yeah. real thing, and we don't realize the physical, mental, and emotional symptoms that are affected after a betrayal, but there's because, you know, think about it. This was the person or these were the people you trusted the most. This mm -hmm. was the person. These were the people who gave you a sense of safety and security. So when these are the very people to shatter it, it's traumatizing. It's a lot to clean up. And it's also really common what you said about how uh, we go back sometimes because, you know, uh, financially it's convenient. Now that's, you know, when you think about it, that doesn't mean it's a good decision for your mind and for your heart, right? And and uh, I'll tell you, there were three groups in the study who did not heal in the study that I did. One group, this was the group that was, um, they just refused to accept their betrayal. Like they had their story, they were just sticking with it. The second group, this was the group that uh, was numbing, avoiding, distracting. They were so distraught. You know, they ran to the doctor who put them on a mood stabilizer or anti-anxiety medication, or they started drinking right? Or emotionally eating or numbing in front of the TV. They didn't heal either. And then there was a third group. And this was the group where the betrayer had very little consequences. So whether it was out of financial fear, big mm -hmm. reason, religious reasons, that was another big one, mm -hmm. uh, not wanting to break up a family, fear of the unknown. They just tried to put it behind them. I saw two things with this group. Number one, a further deterioration of the relationship. And number two, this was the group that was the most physically sick. So you are classic, you know, of, of what the study just proved. And, and, you know, it's easy, it's easy, easy to see why your heart can't handle that. It's too much of an assault. But what I see is so many people are so afraid of that complete and utter death and destruction of the old, but without that, they can't birth the new, like in my scenario, that was the deal breaker that you know that was it but here's the thing then i then what i chose to do was do something so, for me so radically different which was you know enroll in a phd program i mean where was where was i going to find, find the time and the money i mean i had no idea but it was only in that doing something so totally different did something completely change now what happened was i started doing all this healing on his own my husband did too and then we met up again at a very different level. And not long ago, we married each other again, you know, new rings, new vows, new dress, and our four kids is our bridal party. Never 
in a billion years would I have done that if I didn't totally change and for sure if he didn't either. But that's where that crash and burn, you know, that could be the end. It, it rebirths a new you. Like with my family, it wasn't an option to rebuild with them. So I rebuilt myself and moved on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with him, it was crash and burn of everything we had. And then, you know, meeting up again later on as these two totally different people. One truth that I discovered during this whole time that I was on my own, I say on my own, I said I was in one bad relationship after another, and then finally decided it was time that I just, just stayed on my own for a little bit. And then I learned myself again, where I had lost myself in my first marriage. I, I didn't know who I was. I forgot the things that I liked and enjoyed. And, you know, even the relationships that I had been in and out of, I, I totally lost myself. And then learning to live with myself, and discovering, hey, I remember I like doing this and then do things that I didn't realize that I would enjoy. And eventually I was able to get into another relationship, which was more stable. And I guess I was, I don't want to say reaffirmed, but the love that I found in, in the relationship I'm in now, one thing I said I would never do was get married again. And after a year of, you know, dating, and then eventually we moved in together to see how it worked. We got married and this has been the best six years of my life. Um, how important is it for someone to get to know themselves before getting into a relationship? It's crucial. And, and, you know, I love that you said that because what usually, what, what so often happens is, we're so brokenhearted. We're so upset. We just want that pain to go away. So we think the next relationship is going to make it better. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, and if you could see my hands here, and for those listening, what I'm doing is I'm just showing my hands down low, meeting up with each other. You break up. You're so sad. You're so upset. So all you want is to reconnect with that person or somebody else, right? But here's the opportunity to heal physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. But if you're so committed to someone right here, what happens is you start doing the work to heal and you know what you do? You sabotage yourself because you don't want to outgrow that person, mm -hmm. right? You like this up here, but you keep sabotaging yourself because you don't want to outgrow them. And then eventually what happens is you like it here and you're like, you start getting frustrated. You're like, well, why can't they do this? Well, they're not ready, just like you weren't beforehand. So mm -hmm. eventually when you're here and this person's here, you get this, right? Where this person's like, what happened to you? And you're like, ooh. That's all you got, you know? So the whole idea is you do the work to get here, which is the work you did. This can't help but show up, whether it's this person saying, I better step up my game to meet the strength of this person, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they everybody goes their own way. But at the very least, when this is where you live and there's no budging, you can't help but meet up here. So oh, yeah. your wife now, you did this and she was here. And that's why you got together here. Does that make oh, sense? Oh, yeah, very much so. Yeah. I, I, I did discover that because I mean, before she cheated on me, it was almost like she uh, emotionally checked out on me. Yeah. And I was sabotaging myself in many ways with the drinking and, and my, my drug use got really bad. I mean, my cocaine habit was just it was awful. And it's, I should have been dead, to be honest with you. But when I got in a relationship with, with my wife that I have now, I noticed that I started taking better care of myself. Um, I, I lost a lot of weight, um, I'm a lot healthier. I mean, I still have some underlying health problems, but I mean, we're working on it. But I noticed how much my life changed Yeah. because now it's... And another thing I learned too is marriage is not 50, 50. It's a hundred, a hundred yeah. all the way, all the way. Well, and, and think about it. She was here and you, you know, you were rising up on your own and she wasn't going to go down here to meet with you. You know, it's like, That's you right. had to step it up. 
And that's yeah. exactly what happened. Then it's then, you know, instead of that whole, yeah, I, I can't stand that, you know, you complete me thing. You know, it's like <laughs> best you are is a half and you're looking for another half. So best case scenario, you're a whole. No, that may have been what it was like in your first marriage. But what you did this time was you're like, no, 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 I'm making myself a whole person. What do I like? Who am I? What do I need? What works for me? And then you become whole, you meet another whole person, then you get together as a power couple. Very different experience. I mean, she has definitely helped me in so many ways. And and she is she is reassuring, but I don't need her validation to know who I am anymore. Yeah. I think it's very important for people to realize other you don't rely on other people to validate you. You right. have to validate yourself. Yeah. Now, um, moving on from that kind of betrayal um you you mentioned about the heart attacks and stuff yep. um there was a, a lady really good friend of the family um her husband passed away and she had just had her son and i don't know what happened as what led up to the argument but he had pretty much said that you know he he didn't want to have anything to do with his mom and it literally broke her heart and she had a heart attack and died immediately after that. So um, can you, can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah. You, you know, I'll speak to it in this way. One of the discoveries was that there's a collection of symptoms, physical, mental, and emotional, so common to betrayal. It's now known as post betrayal syndrome. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a quiz on our site to see to what extent people are struggling. We've had about 60,000 people take the quiz. Uh, men, women, every age, just about every uh, country is represented. First of all, a few things about the quiz. The first thing is we've all been taught time heals all wounds. I have the proof. When it comes to betrayal, that's not true. You can't count on time to heal it. It needs a very, it's a very different type of life crisis that needs a specific type of healing protocol. That's the first thing. And this, you know, and then every few months I pull the stats from the quiz just to see where people are. Um, you want me to share some of them? Sure. Okay. To. So when I say betrayal, I mean, this is the breaking of a spoken or unspoken rule. And it's with our family members, partners, friends, coworkers, self, right? People in a position of authority, you name it. Okay. 78% constantly revisit their experience and, and think back to where you were and see if any of this resonates. 81% feel a loss of personal power. 80% mm. are hypervigilant, like that's exhausting. 94% deal with painful triggers. These are the most common physical symptoms. 71% have low energy. 68% have sleep issues. 63% have extreme fatigue. 47% have weight changes, right? You said you gained a lot of weight. 45% have digestive issues. And that could be anything from Crohn's, IBS, diverticulitis, constipation, diarrhea, you name it. The most common mental symptoms, 78% are overwhelmed, 70% are walking around in a state of disbelief, 68% are unable to focus, 64% are in shock, 62% can't concentrate. So you can't concentrate, you're exhausted, like you still have to raise your kids, you still have to go to work. That's not even the, the emotional issues. Emotionally, 88% have extreme sadness, 83% are very angry. 82% are hurt, 80% have anxiety, 79% are stressed, just a few more. This is why I wrote the book, Trust Again, ready? 84% have an inability to trust, and you referenced that earlier. 67% prevent themselves from forming deep relationships because they're afraid of being hurt again. 82% find it hard to move forward, 90% want to move forward, but they don't know how. Wow. There's so many things you said in there that I can relate to. Uh, mm -hmm. ever since the heart attack and I attribute it to, to the heart attack itself, but I've had insomnia for all these years. Yep. You're talking, so it's all going on almost 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and anxiety, I, 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 like you said, went to the doctor and they want to throw pills at me. Yep. Mind you, meditation has helped me in so many ways. I'm, I'm off the, the anxiety medication, um, PTSD from a uh, childhood trauma, which I want to talk about that too, uh, mm -hmm. that kicked off and I'm now learning to deal with that a lot better. So many things, oh my gosh, uh, the right. not feeling like I'm not adequate. And even though my wife reassures me that I am yeah. and I, I trust her, but 
I still feel that uh, if what's wrong with me? Those beliefs. But you know what's even crazier? Those statistics I read, and there wasn't one that was like 20%, 30%, you mm -hmm. know, 40%. These are high. It's what's very... even crazier, those stats weren't even necessarily from a recent betrayal. It's wow. from something that happened decades ago. So now imagine here you were, you know, something happened, let's say in childhood, and usually a repeat betrayal means an unhealed betrayal. So something could have happened 30, 40, 50 plus years ago. That person may not know, care, or even remember what they did. And here, you know, we are living with the PTSD symptoms and the gut issues and the anxiety. I have those too. And <laughs> yeah and think about it the ways that the addictions because of something that happened back then look at the power we've given to that experience and that person that's i mean i'm i'm here to you know that's that's all we do within the pt you know the the, the pbt institute is move you through all of that because the worst of it happened already you owe it to yourself to do something really good with something really painful I'm glad you mentioned about giving the power to, to someone else, because mm -hmm. that's exactly what you do when you relive this stuff. It's a, it's like you have there, they live rent free in your brain. Exactly. Exactly. And they've been doing that for long enough. So, you know, yeah. we have people coming into the PBT Institute all the time and they're like, yeah, it's like, you know, 30 years ago and, and this happened and I have gut issues and I have, you know, mm -hmm. addictions and all of these things. And that's just not fair. There's like a whole life that you, you know, you need to live. And here's the thing. We can spot an unhealed betrayal a mile away. It shows up in our health, in our work, in our relationships. For example, I'll see it in one of two ways with relationships. The first way is a repeat betrayal, classic sign of an unhealed betrayal. The faces change, but it's the same thing. We go from friend to friend to friend, partner to partner to partner, you know, boss to boss to boss. What the heck is it me? Yes, it is. Not in that it's your fault, in that there's something profound you need to learn. Mm -hmm. The lesson could be you are lovable, worthy, deserving. You need better boundaries in place, whatever it is. Until and unless you get that, you're going to have opportunities in the form of people to teach you, right? The other way is in the big wall goes up. We're like, nope, been there, done that. No one's getting close to my heart again. We think that's coming from a place of strength. It's not. It's coming from fear. Yeah. Our heart was so hurt that we don't want to be vulnerable ever again and risk that kind of pain. But that doesn't, that's not healed. That's just hardened. You know, and then the, that's what that's why, you know, my my uh, other book, Trust to Get From Hard to Healed, is all about that. And then, uh, you know, we see it in health too. People go to the most well meaning doctors, coaches, healers, therapists to manage a stress related symptom, illness, condition, disease. At the root of it is an unhealed betrayal. Like, for example, I mentioned 45% of everybody betrayed has a gut issue. Anything. So think about it. You go to a, the best gut doctor on the planet, but meanwhile, you know, if they don't know there's a there's a betrayal at the root of that, they're just managing the symptoms. You're not getting to the root of it, right? We see it at work too. People, you know, they want that razor promotion, they deserve it, but their confidence was shattered in the betrayal, so they don't have the confidence to ask. Or they uh, they want to be a team player, collaborative partner, but the person they trusted the most proved untrustworthy. How do they trust that boss, that coworker, that partner? You see, shows up very everywhere. true. Very true. Yep. Uh, my confidence was shot so bad. And even when I do something that that is noteworthy, I mm -hmm. still don't feel like it's good enough. Yep. And it's well, that, very... that's how you know that power, how much power that betrayal still has over you. And, it, you know, you, you talked about the, the gut issues. I've had a stomach problem twice mm -hmm. and went to three different doctors. They did every test in the world, couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Yep. And I mean, it was almost like a knife was being stabbed into my stomach at the time. Yeah. Yep. Now, now um, I want to talk about another issue of betrayal, which is uh, as a child, um, my father molested me. And, um, you know, this was supposed to be my father, my, my parent. He was the one that was supposed to, to look out for me. Do you deal with people that have had that happen to them? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's one of those things that um, you move into your adult relationships with such a skewed version of what is right 
and what's wrong because you're right here 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 here's your your father who's supposed to guide you and take care of you and protect you you know and it it throws us off so then you move into relationships and it's not because they're good it's because there's something that's familiar oh the mistreatment oh the you know the disregard i know that that feels like home you know mm -hmm. and so until and unless we see this that's why the repeat betrayals keep happening and it really takes um, moving through the experience and 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 rewiring rewiring the mind mm -hmm. because those conditioned beliefs and behaviors that were formed because of what you made that to mean has to all be reworked can i and get I'll some i'm sorry go ahead i didn't mean to cut you off yeah yeah no but that's but then when you do you realize even though it happened to me it wasn't about me it has nothing to do with me yeah. so i have to rework um those beliefs that are now you know it's like water over a rock it's that's the go-to response something happens i think it's me something happens i think i'm not worthy i'm not mm. deserving i'm shameful i'm this and that and it's nothing to do with you but it's just that was the conditioning and that's all that has to be that's the work that has to be redone and when it is uh, the, the most exciting for me of the three discoveries was there's this collect uh, no that was uh, the, that there are these five stages that we will move through if we are to fully heal mm -hmm. and we even know what happens physically mentally and emotionally at every stage and we know what it takes to move from one stage to the next what you're talking about is classic stage three transformation doesn't even begin until stage four but most people get stuck in stage three and it's that's where that conditioning that it, it's so hardwired they can't imagine anything other than surviving their experience I, i'd like some advice i think i've kind of already made up my mind what i'm going to do but maybe you can help change my mind um you know my my mother she ended up leaving my father um I was, I'd already gotten married and moved out when that happened. And, um, my father has passed away since, but I've never spoke to my mother about it. Should I speak to her or should I just leave it alone? I mean, it's over. It's, it's always one of those things. And, and I always recommend here's where you check in with the highest, strongest, wisest, best version of you mm -hmm. in your meditation and have a conversation with that version of you, which is who you really are. And that's the that's the version of you that makes your best decisions. Well, my thought was I didn't really want to tell my mother because mm -hmm. she's already been through so much in her life. Mm -hmm. And uh, she I mean, she just recently lost her mother and father, my grandparents. Yeah. And you know, I mean, she's in her 70s. I was like, why bring this up? She's already been through enough. I just, I'd yeah. rather not bring it up if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. So on to another betrayal. <laughs> and mind you, I'm, I'm not special in that department. It happens to a lot of people, but I feel like it's happened a lot. Um, I don't want to get into a lot of details because it's a long story, but um, my boss, mm -hmm. my old job, um, he had reassured me that he was going to take care of a situation he didn't uh his boss above him uh, and and himself decided that they were going to punish me they wanted to take my position away take my my truck away and all these things well to make a long story short they were in the wrong hr sided with me and uh, the 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 high big boss he ended up getting fired <laughs> but um that I ended up, even though they said, you got everything back, we want you back. I said, I can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this guy's lies. And until you get rid of him, nothing's ever going to change. Yeah. So, um, have, do you, have you run across that situation? Of course that's a, yeah. Workplace betrayal. You know, those are the type that don't break us and, you know, we're never broken bent. Right. You know what I mean? Um, like the family member or the partner, those are the ones that absolutely crush us like nothing else the the workplace betrayals infuriate us 
because yes. it's so wrong. It's so wrong, you know. So it, it, there's a difference in in the level of cleanup needed in its wake, you know. Still, it's still a betrayal. Still, a lot to move through, but the physical response and the emotional response is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Well, real quick, um, I'll tell you one situation that happened. We I worked for the water department, mm -hmm. and we had a summer that was really really hot no rain. I mean, we were having a ridiculous amount of water breaks and mm -hmm. to the point where I had guys working almost 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. you know, one crew after another. And then I ended up being a supervisor. I ended up getting a truck, getting the machine, going out and fixing leaks with some volunteers. And I, my guys, they worked and worked and worked. I mean, they really busted tail that summer. And we finally got to a point where things started to slow down. They got caught up and they'd worked so hard that I, I stopped one morning and I got them donuts and kolaches and all this stuff, just a little thank you. And so I yeah. got up for that meeting and I said, guys, thank you so much. I mean, I know this is just a small token, but you know, this is my way of saying thank you. And everybody was so appreciative and, you know, everybody was thanking me during the day. I'm like, no, y'all did the work. So I get pulled into the office. My boss yells at me, tells me that you got to stop praising these guys so much. They're going to stop working for you. And, uh, and then uh, two weeks later, when we had our next meeting, guess who brought kolaches and donuts? That yeah. Yeah. Well, and you can just tell that guy's coming from scarcity and lack. And, you know, the problem is when he gets, when he gets you to believe that, you know that's that's just doing such a big disservice no you were doing the right thing you were coming from your heart you know it's like you're you're seeing you're you're acknowledging and validating the hard work someone does who doesn't want to be acknowledged and validated thank you right thank you you know so you got to trust your gut never lies people do your gut never does so i have to ask you too it, do people that have done the betrayal do they come to you and ask for help yeah yeah sometimes they do uh it depends you know if someone just if they're so filled with like, like, let's say a classic narcissist who really has no empathy, you know, that they're, they're just moving on to their next victim. There's at this point where they are, there's just no hope for them. I can't help them. And I don't want to help them. They have to, they have to realize, oh my gosh, you know what? I, I just destroyed the heart and the life of the, of the person I love the most. That was a sacred gift. And look what I did to it. What can I do? To, to make this up to that person. What can I do to right this wrong? Mm -hmm. If not for them, just going forward. So I'm a better woman. So I'm a better man. Then we're all over that. But for the person who's just like, yeah, you know, it's what I do, or they deserved it, or what, yeah, I have no interest in anybody like that. <laughs> uh, I, to say somebody deserves it, I mean, it's almost like you're judge, jury, and executioner in that, that sense. And uh, two wrongs don't make a right, as they say. But uh, do you ever have anyone come to you that feels like they've just been betrayed by society in general? Especially right now, people yeah. feel betrayed by government, by COVID, so, by life. You know, yeah. it's because think about it, betrayal. I mean, I define betrayal as the breaking of a spoken or unspoken rule, you know, mm -hmm. and here the rules were, if I work, I'll have my job. And all of a sudden, you know, you lose your job because of COVID or something, or, or, you know, betrayed by your health or betrayed by it's like, what's going on in the politics and all these things. So people are feeling betrayed by, I mean, by so many different things, you can feel betrayed by a company. Mm -hmm. You know, there's actually, I remember doing my study and there was something called the love turns to hate principle. And it, I thought it was so interesting. We can love a product that we, we know is bad for us. Like, you know, you know, alcohol is bad for you, right? Oh, yeah. And you love that company, but we would rather choose a company that we know is bad for us than buy something from a company that says they're good. They're, they're offering something for us. And it turns out they're not. Mm -hmm. We turn on them so fast because we, we don't want to be duped. We yeah. would rather knowingly go into something we know isn't in our best interest than be told something is okay and it isn't that's when that love for that product or that company turns to hate so quickly yeah there's been certain brands that i have bought forever mm -hmm. and then they'll come out and do something really stupid mm -hmm. you know they i, I don't even want to get into details but mm -hmm. i yeah. have 
I have just turned my back on them now. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, you're going to treat people this way or you're, you're going to come up with this ridiculous agenda and, and mm. I'm, 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 no, I'm not going to participate in that. I mean, I don't silence anybody. You, everybody has their opinion, mm. but I don't have to go along with it. Right. And exactly. I'm not, I don't have to silence you, but I don't have to go along with it. Exactly. Um, and, and I try to stay out of political stuff when I do my show. Um, my, mm -hmm. my morals will come out. Uh, my ideals come out and you'll kind of get the idea of the type of person that I am. But uh, I feel betrayed in the sense that every time you disagree with someone now, you get labeled a racist, you get labeled yeah. a misogynist and all these things, which I know I'm not. I yeah. don't I don't need someone to validate that point for me. I don't mm -hmm. feel the need to have to come out and defend myself in that that sense. Yeah. But at the same time, it's almost like I'm tired of it and I want to step up and say something. What yeah. do you have advice for that? You know, it's a it is the craziest of times. I've never seen anything like this in our world. And I'm also in health and I see a lot of people who are presenting both sides. Mm -hmm. both sides of of a health scenario and they're at risk of losing their medical licenses and and you know they're getting the um they can't they're getting kicked off of social media platforms and they're <laughs> presenting both sides so so uh, how do you even how do you even make sense of that i mean it's like it's 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 a it's a new world i don't, I don't know so, um yeah. i i have people that come on here and then we we don't have the same views mm -hmm. But doesn't stop me from having a conversation and it just seems like more and more if you have a uh, an opinion about something other people don't like they try to cancel you get you yep. off of social media my my original facebook account mm -hmm. it, it was um shut down and i never was able to get it back all over you know an opinion that shouldn't have been controversial in the first place but for some reason yep. was i don't get it I don't either. I don't know. <laughs> Crazy world, but that's why I'm just sticking with my wheelhouse of betrayal. That's it. I, I understand that completely. Um, mm -hmm. I, I grew up in a different era. We Me too. could disagree and still be friends at the end of the day. Still have, they say, have a beer together. Yeah. You don't have yeah. to agree with everyone, but uh, we can all agree that betrayal is not a good thing. And, and, and I don't see any scenario where that would be okay. Well, the only the only way in betrayal is never okay. The part that that the okay part is when you do something really good with something really painful. Like yeah. I can promise you, the PBT Institute never would have been opened, you know, had it not been for my experience. You know, the books, the the TEDx talks, the the uh, everything, everything I've done never would have happened had that not happened. You know, then it's trauma well served. And my biggest supporter, my husband. You know, that's great. So so that's the only thing that's the only thing that makes it okay i mean integrity could you imagine integrity is my highest value so something like betrayal there's no room for any of that so the only way i could um move through this in any kind of way let alone marry him again was by impacting millions of people <laughs> i don't want to sound like i'm going down a rabbit rabbit hole here but mm -hmm. I guess in a sense, I have to walk back my statement a little bit. If, if you're in a situation where it's going to, I guess, protect someone and they, they perceive it as betrayal, I could say, okay, that that's okay. But still in the end, you're not really betraying them, mm -hmm. but that, that, that's a way deep subject to go down. Yeah. 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 And here's the thing too, you know, someone um, isn't doing the work or isn't healed if if it's 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 okay as long as you don't say anything to anybody you know that no no when i'm talking like from the betrayer that person is willing to do whatever it takes whatever it takes mm -hmm. you know that's a different experience like in my case my husband he well not only did he he's been forever you know since doing right by the kids me he called all my friends to apologize He's my biggest supporter. I mean, think about That's it. I mean, my my story is in trust again. 
the whole story. And I was like, I thought when I sat the sat the family down, I'm like, listen, it's and I'm a, I'm a private person, you know. And I was like, well, the story's in there. I thought they were all gonna the kids would be like, oh, come on, mom, you know. And my husband would be so embarrassed and ashamed. They were like, you know, Ma, you're gonna help a lot of people. And and he said, you know what? They're gonna see that bad guys can be, you know, can become good guys. So that's wonderful. You know, I'm I'm happy to hear success stories out of that. Um, now this might be a little bit deep, but have you ever one, had anyone come to you and say they feel like they've been betrayed by God? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and and that's the thing where they're not seeing where they are. Like, let's say someone's lost a child, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they can't find what kind of what kind of making sense making meaning out of that can they can they do right but uh that's where spirituality comes in real handy and we've seen people in, in the study even proved it a lot of people left their religion they felt their religion didn't support them but yeah or they moved towards the spiritual side of their religion or if they weren't really practicing anything they became more spiritual and it saved them wow it's amazing you said that See, I felt betrayed because I, I used to preach mm -hmm. and my every waking breath was all about God and, and my church. And, and mm -hmm. when my, my little brother passed away, um, even when my, my father passed away, um, one of my best friends passed away. And this was all in within a few years. Yeah. And then, of course, my marriage falling apart. And, and I just I felt like he had let me down mm -hmm. and I stepped away from, from the church. I quit preaching the whole nine yards. And yeah. it's, it's funny because I didn't even think about it until I got with my wife, Michelle. Yeah. And what you said about the spiritual side of it, I'm, I'm not really into going to church because, and, and forgive me, anybody out there that feels differently, but I feel like it's a man-made rule place to go to instead of yeah. God's rules. And I I've stepped into more spiritual. I mean, I actually sit down and talk to God. I meditate, go yeah. into nature to ground myself. And I, th I think yeah. more of God when I'm in nature yeah. now I feel I'm in a better place with my relationship with God. Yeah. Very common after, you know, when, when we're healing, that is a very common move because, you know, we, we need this sense of connection desperately you know and also trust is shattered you don't trust the person who betrayed you you don't trust yourself you're like where was I? how did i not see how did i not know so if you can't trust in the person you trusted the most and you don't trust in yourself well how in the world can you trust in anyone or anything mm -hmm. that's where spirituality comes in because you're like at yeah. least i can trust in something bigger other than me oh yes oh yes definitely mm -hmm. um now i know it's the individual that's going to have to do the work but they need some guidance so yep. if someone needs help from you how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, first thing to do is just uh, you know take the the healed or hardened quiz so you see what stage you're in. They can just find that at healedorhardenedquiz.com, and then take a look at the PVT Institute. I mean, we we have we have members, men, women from all over the world. We have coaches that are guys, coaches that are women. They teach the most amazing classes, everything you need to heal, and they can just find that at the. PBT is in post betrayal transformation, the PBT institute.com. Don't stay stuck. Staying stuck is a choice. Oh, it's yeah. proven. I did the research. I know what it takes to heal. We have everything you need to heal at the PBT Institute. Now I'm going to put that link up in the description. So people will be able to, to click on it and go to it. But uh, uh, what about social media presence? My name? Yeah. Debbie okay. Silver, D E B I uh, Silver S like Sam, I L B like boy E R. Okay. And how many books do you have? Uh, this, I, the last one is my sixth, but the two that based on what we talked about, mm -hmm. trust again, this absolutely will help someone move through the five stages of betrayal. The mm -hmm. four step trust rebuilding process in, is in here. And because everyone seems to get stuck in stage three from hardened to healed is just for stage three. And they can get those from your website. Amazon. Yeah. The website. And, and if you're an audible person, you like audiobooks, I narrated both of them. <laughs> that's yeah I, i've talked to several authors in the last few days and they all talk about how they they narrate their own books i'm like oh that's that's great <laughs> yeah. 
they would get stuttering from me. So, <laughs> well, it's not, I didn't say I did a good job, but at least you know who it is. <laughs> I hear you. And um, did I read correctly? You have a YouTube channel. I do. Yep. And and just look at my name. And I did uh, two TEDx talks. Mm. One is really about what we talked about, and that one is, do you have post betrayal syndrome? Okay. Uh, do you do any public speaking? I do a lot of public speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm and all over. Do you have anything coming up soon that people might be able to go to? You know, um, I have a lot of it, like a lot of podcasts and stuff. And I have my own mm -hmm. podcast from betrayal to breakthrough. But if you go to the PBT Institute, you'll you'll just and just uh, take one of the quizzes, then you know, every week I send out an email letting everybody know what's going on. And you can stay in touch there. Okay, great. Um, I guess all the links will be on uh, your your website. So we'll, yep. we'll put that up and people can can check everything out and uh I, I wish the best for you you're doing great work Thank and you. uh I, I take a little bit from everyone that i talk to i'm gonna take a lot from speaking to you today oh, i'm so glad thank um, you so much and, and thanks for the opportunity to share oh of course if if you have anything that uh in the future that you need to promote please contact me we can either do another show or i could just Put it on our social media and help you out that way uh, thank you so much of course so uh until the next one everyone thank you for joining us and if you're new to the channel uh, i appreciate you stopping by and i hope you come back and please subscribe for those of you who are regular thank you for your support i really appreciate it and until the next one everyone please take care be kind to one another god bless and peace we hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.